Hi, this is Lucia with Yard of Love. I'm a dating and relationship expert specializing in helping you get your ex back. And welcome back, No Contact Army. I hope you have been a good soldier and stayed in no contact. And if you haven't, hopefully this video will help you to do that. And if you too would like to join the No Contact Army, then all you have to do is hit the subscribe button and if you want to read the No Contact Army manual, just go to NoContactSecrets.com and download two free chapters before deciding whether you want to purchase it or not. So today's topic is stop chasing your ex if you want them back. And I'm making this video because I've seen comments and had a session with a client where they're making the same mistake. I've done a lot of videos on no contact, but what about the period after no contact? That's just as important as the no contact itself because the reason you're doing it is so that your ex will contact you and you will have a chance at getting back together. So once your ex has contacted you, you have to do things correctly. Otherwise, all that no contact will have gone to waste. It will have been for nothing. And that's where a lot of people make the mistake. They think that just because they hear from their ex and they go out on a date with their ex, that now it's back on, baby. <laughs> not so fast. That's not how it works. So I'm going to read a comment here from one of the videos on YouTube and we'll go from there. So this woman says, I got my ex to confess everything he felt. So I don't like the way that is worded. I mean, who are you, the CIA, and you got a suspect to confess? It's like you manipulated him to confess. You didn't say, oh, he confessed. And so the fact that you got him to confess gave you a false sense of confidence which led you to make the mistake that I'm now going to read about further in the comment. Okay, uh, we were hanging out talking daily. Last night he came over and made me and my daughter dinner. After dinner, I made the mistake. And she put that in capital letters. At least she knows it was a mistake. I started talking about things and using the words we. One example of what I'm talking about is that we used to live together and I asked him, so what are we going to do when this house is paid off next year? Do you want to move or just stay here forever? His response was, do we really have to have this discussion tonight? I felt like an idiot. Then he started acting sort of distant. Oh, well, I'm not surprised. <laughs> he told me he was going back to his mom's to stay for the night. He loved me and he would see me later. I did take your advice though after that. Oh, well, at least you took it at some point. I let him go and I didn't flip, even though I wanted to, as I feel he just wants to do everything at his pace and terms. So first of all, we do not flip, okay? Unless you're in your teens or early 20s, maybe then, but from your photo, it doesn't look like it. So that is immature, classless, ineffective, and most of all, basic. And we do not do basic on this channel. Yes, it is at his pace because guess what? He's the dumper, okay? So he decides how slowly or how not so slowly to come back. It's on his pace. That would be like a guy starting to date a woman and she wants to take her time being intimate with, for the first time with him and he wants to flip and say, oh, it has to be on her pace, at her pace when we have sex? Well, yeah, the woman decides when you're going to have sex and the dumper decides when they're going to come back and how quickly or how slowly they're gonna come back, okay? So I'm glad you didn't flip, as you say, because you would have been totally out of line to continue on, I guess you're right. This isn't something that happens fast and I'm going to not initiate any further contact or jump to big, quest big questions such as that. 
Exactly. You know, when I said in my original video that I made about getting back with an ex, how to easily get your ex back, and I said, do nothing to get your ex back, I wasn't just being flippant. I literally meant do nothing from the moment they break up with you until the moment they tell you they want to get back with you. Your job is to do nothing. And the problem everyone makes, or the mistake everyone makes, is they're running around trying to do something. You know, they hear from their ex, their ex sends them a little heart or a meme, and then they go, well, what do I do? What do I do? Nothing. Who said you had to do anything? You do nothing. And that's the problem. Stop trying to make things happen. That's why I had people take the patience pledge in one of my videos, which I do not recall the title of now, because the mistake people make when they start interacting with their ex is that they start moving things along. They want things to move real fast. And I'm telling you, this doesn't happen that quickly. They didn't decide to break up with you overnight. Usually it's a buildup. So they're not going to decide all of a sudden to get back with you and be back with you the next day or the next week. They are like a deer in the woods, okay? And if you've ever seen a deer in the woods, you know that if you approach quickly, they will run. And so talking about, oh, what are we gonna do with this house? That would be like going on a first date with someone and then saying, so uh, are we gonna be exclusive now? No, <laughs> you wouldn't do that. You're trying to move things along too fast. And when you do that, you're never fully secure that they really want you back because you're the one who's trying to make things happen. And people listen to my videos and they do the exact opposite. And I actually had a client who she um, saw her ex, they had uh, a nice chat, whatever, and then he said, oh, we should do this again. And so did she wait? Was she patient and wait for him to reach out and say, oh, we should do this again? No, she was the one that suggested getting together and whereas before he had been texting back fairly quickly, all of a sudden it took him all day to respond. And so luckily I helped her to reverse that situation, but just because you're in contact with your ex and just because they say, oh, well, we should get together again, or, they, or you got them, as this woman said, to confess their feelings, it doesn't mean they're getting back with you tomorrow or next week. So stop trying to grab at them and have things happen at your pace because it's gonna backfire and the no contact you did may have all been for nothing if they then get scared and back away. Let them take their time. This is a new relationship. So it's not like the old relationship where you had certain privileges because of all the time you spent together and the connection. This is now a new relationship. You no longer have those privileges. So don't just assume that all of a sudden it's we. No, right now it's you and your ex, it's not we. Do not mess this up after all the no contact that you did because that would be like running a marathon and you're almost at the finish line and then you trip and you come in second. Oops, <laughs> don't do that. You do nothing to make things happen. They have to take it at their own pace and often it is going to be a lot slower than you would like, but at least you're out of no contact and at least you're in contact and you just have to wait and see what happens, okay? So if you would like my help personally to make sure you don't mess up, either in no contact or when you hear from your ex, then you can contact me at theartoflove.net the direct link is below and we will send you the rates for coaching. If you're listening on YouTube, remember to like, subscribe and share. If you're on iTunes or any other podcast, I would appreciate if you would rate and review the podcast. And finally, remember that love inspires, empowers, uplifts and enlightens.